Welcome back to the Mixmark Kickstart, where today we're taking a look at editing a vocal track and why it's so important to do before we start piling on the plugins. Let's dive straight in. Editing vocals typically kicks off with building a comp track, a composite track. Let's say you've recorded three good takes, good, three good vocal takes. Uh, you can work through each of those vocal takes, just taking the best performances, the best elements out of each one and building a composite track, a comp track, which is like a, a super vocal. It's containing all the best elements of those three takes uh, that you've done. Uh, this take, however, that I'm looking at today was all done in a one. So I'm going to go through it right now with you. We're going to be looking at what cuts we can make with regards to uh, clicks, any ambient background noises, uh, sibilance, uh, and any particularly aggressive breaths. Um, now, when you're building your comp track, you kind of instinctively do do that at the same time because you're not going to be bringing across anything which doesn't sound um, too good. Uh, and it's also sort of really forces you to hyper listen to those takes as well. Uh, now, this one take, for example, so this went through from start to finish, means we've got the mic live right at the start of the song. So I've soloed that out. We can see here. There's a little click, some sort of computery noise. Um, so I'm going to uh, just drag my line up here. Now when I'm dragging it up, you also want to check that you don't um, artificially cut any uh, breaths. Um, because once you start getting further down the line with compression, if you've suddenly cut a breath halfway, you kind of get a... <laughs> which sound, can sound really unnatural. Here's a little story about my... So I'm straight in here. Now with regards to breaths, I tend to edit out anything that sounds really overly aggressive. Um, I always think of Muse when I think of uh, overly aggressive breaths. Uh, generally I leave in most breaths because I like it to sound pretty natural. Um, but it really depends. If there's a vocal uh, a breath that's particularly heavy, it might be something that you want to take out. Let's just have a look and listen through this vocal take. Good. Don't look in the so small breath, Don't look no, no problems with anything like that. But let's go a bit further along this uh, timeline. Day release. Now I've got another big gap. The Again, where the mic's live, I've got a bit of a lip smack there. So I'm going to make a little cut. And I'm just going to get rid of some of this dead air. Again, when you're editing, especially if you're doing it visually, just take care not to cut any S's off as well. If this is day release. Check for the breath. The pull is driving. So you can hear we've got a little breath happening here. The pull is driving. The pull is driving. I'm actually going to cut that really tight and get rid of that first breath. Another useful technique when vocal editing is to use your fade ins as well um, on particularly aggressive typically the start of um, phrases. Here's a couple of examples here just going into um, a bridge. Who's these guys? Can you so I can grab up my um, track just here and just fade in to soften those first transients. Let's take a listen. Who's these guys? Community cups. So much softer, and it's going to mean my compressor's going to have to work not so hard. I mean, editing you can spend some real time on with the vocal, and I think time spent here on the vocal to smoothen out and get as great performance uh, as possible before you start again loading in those plugins is well worth it. And you can do the same thing to tame uh, unwanted sibilance too. Beast and right on beast. Beast and. So we can just bring in a little fade, just to tame it. Again, you don't want it to sound unnatural. The beast, and now you're just taking the edge off it a little bit. Of course, your DS is going to catch some of this, but again, you're just taking the work off it now, so the DS doesn't have to work so hard, and ultimately, you're going to get more of a natural sound. Okay, so I've now gone through all of my vocal takes, and I've got rid of any of those unwanted breaths, any clicks, any unfortunate ambient stuff which was going on in between the breaks, and just cleared up those breaks. Uh, in between uh, in between the verses and the choruses, cleared up all those silences. Um, so now I'm going to highlight all of those and I'm going to bounce it to uh, one, uh, one track to turn it all into one super clean uh, edited vocal. Uh, 
Now the next thing I'm going to do is actually reach for a plugin um, from Isotope, and this plugin is called uh, D Click. This is such a cool plugin. Uh, I've set it to multi-band random clicks, and what it does is uh, remove uh, the unwanted mouth noises, um, which you can't get to um, when editing. Just take a listen. Um, if I just click here, you can hear what it's taken out. If you can hear that, <laughs> it's not a very nice sound. Let me just unclick it. In the air. And let's take a listen to what it's done. Trouble in the streets, it don't look too good. Don't look him in the eye, a forbidden stare. A whistle as he passes, hanging in the air. Don't you want to even try it? Just one taste. Don't walk by it. From your face, I can see your thinking. And finally, for my vocal editing, I'm going to bring in some vocal tuning. Uh, and this really comes down to what plugin you've got, what plugin you like to use, be that Melodyne. Um, be that auto tune, be that uh, what I'm using today, which is Waves Tune Real Time. I really like this plugin because it's so quick to use and it's more of a nudging in uh, kind of tuner rather than getting right in there and, and tuning it um, by hand, piece by piece. Um, and you know, this vocal take just requires in a couple of places a little bit of tightening up with regards to tuning. There's no big problems in there to fix. Um, so it's very easy to set this one. I've set it to fairly natural settings with regards to its note transition and speed. Uh, other things I like about this plugin is you can choose um, with regards to what vocal, where you want it to really be focusing in, and you can uh, tune it into what scale and stuff, and it does it in real time. Would you want to even try it? Just one taste. Don't walk by it from your face. I can see you thinking, oh, no, I really don't think so. So now all that's left to do is to print those effects down onto a new track. In the last video, we took a look at exporting them and bringing them back into the mix. Uh, today, we're going to do the possibly more efficient way of doing it, which is to bounce our selection to a new track. So we're going to bounce those moves we've made combined with uh, adding the D-click and the Waves tune all onto a new track. So there's our new printed vocal bounced across. With the old vocal, we can just hide it from the timeline just in case we need, we need to go back to it at any point. And there's our edited vocal. If you're enjoying this series, don't forget to like and subscribe. I've got a free vocal EQ cheat sheet just waiting for you. You can download it right now, clicking on the link below this video. Don't forget for my courses too, there's an exclusive 10% off code down there for you too. That's YouTube 10. You'll find all those links below this video. Most importantly, go and have yourself a great day.